Good morning, everyone. Um, I'd just like to draw to your attention uh, for the uh, notices. Uh, this evening at 7 p.m., we have the licensing of the new area dean, uh, the Reverend Richard England, um, who will succeed uh, the Reverend Ian as area dean of Fareham. Uh, the service is to be held at Holy Rood Church, Stubbington. All are welcome, uh, but any clergy or readers going are requested not to robe, and there will be no procession. Um, the church will be closed all day following morning prayer on Friday the 12th of January for the Scripture Union's retreat. Um, Margaret Elliott's funeral uh, will take place at St Mary's Church on Thursday the 18th of January at 12 p.m. and there will be some refreshments afterwards. Um, St. Peter's Titchfield. Uh, the bishop has asked the Reverend Ian to take oversight of St. Peter's Church Titchfield uh, while remaining uh, as vicar of St. Mary's. Who be he will be licensed as priest in charge on Thursday the 1st of February at 7 p.m. to which you are all invited. We are seeking to appoint an associate priest for Titchfield who will be part-time and live in the vicarage there. And now we can have a few moments quiet before the service commences. Good morning, everybody. <coughs> Excuse me. May I wish you all a very happy new year and this our first Sunday back in this new year. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany, which technically was yesterday on the 6th of January. Uh, one or two changes, I hope all for the better. Hope you like the new liturgy book. I know some of you don't like change, but Remember when the, when the old one first came? Uh, hopefully we shall have a king for many generations to come now. So uh, the text will be pretty much the same. The, uh, the second uh, change is this. Obviously we're using the, the high altar for Epiphany as a special feast. But next week the nave altar will be back with the rail. <clears throat> the other uh, main change is this, that we are returning to the use of the common cup or the chalice uh, for those who require it. However, we are aware, if Friday service was anything to go by, that there are still a lot of people rather nervous about drinking from the common cup. So until we work out something and we'll be having a deanery chapter on Tuesday and I'll find out what all, everybody else is doing, but at the moment, uh, and we'll take communion standing here if you just come to the chancel steps, at the moment, there are three choices. You can either uh, sip the wine from the common cup, or you may still intinct, but if you try and not let your fingers go into the wine, uh, or you may just simply take the bread alone. That is also a very valid way of taking communion. So hopefully, uh, we'll get back into some sort of uh, routine, 
and uh, things will, will settle down. So we begin this morning's service by preparing our hearts for worship as we say together the Collect for Purity. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. The Collect for the Sovereign. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant, Charles, our king and governor, that he, knowing whose minister he is, may above all things seek thy honor and glory, and that we and all his subjects, duly considering whose authority he hath, may faithfully serve, honor, and humbly obey him in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth ever one God, world without end. Amen. The Collect for Epiphany. O God, who by the leading of a star manifested thine only Son to the peoples of the earth, mercifully grant that we who know thee now by faith may at last behold thy glory face to face through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples, but the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Here ends the first reading. Second reading is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, 
that is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel I have become a servant, according to the gift of God's grace that was given to me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, the grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ, and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things, so that through the church the wisdom of God in rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. Here ends the second reading. The Holy Gospel is written in the second chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the first verse. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to be shepherd of my people Israel." Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the gospel of the Lord. May the words I speak and the words we hear point us to the one who is the eternal word, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There is something about these mysterious visitors from the East which catches the imagination. From the New Testament itself, we know little about them. But traditional mythology has sought to elaborate the picture. Will it forever ruin your Christmas if I tell you that they did not arrive at Bethlehem on the night Jesus was born, but probably six months to a year afterwards? 
I sort of identify with the wise men in some respects because I think that they represent everybody. That is probably why over the centuries artists began to paint them to represent different races, one Western, one Arab, and one Black. They are also portrayed as men at different stages in life, a youth, a man in his prime, and an old man. Therefore, they are all of us. And they set out on a journey, which was not just a physical journey, but a spiritual quest. Although we know how the story ends, that they discovered and worshipped, that they discovered Jesus and worshipped him as a king, they did not know at the start of their search that it was Jesus that they were looking for. In fact, if we had told them that the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow would be to find a child belonging to a poor family and living in a somewhat makeshift temporary accommodation, they might not have set out in the first place. The novel, The Alchemist, by Paula Coelho, in some respects mirrors the journey of the wise men. It's about a young Spanish shepherd who leaves his home and sets out on an odyssey across North Africa's desert in search of buried treasure in Egypt. And I'd like to illustrate this sermon with a few quotes from that book. Now, most of today's, we call them the chattering classes, the trendy role models of theater, music, and the arts, the celebrities will often say that they are not religious, but they are spiritual, which usually means that they desire to be good on their own terms, that they want some sort of fuzzy feeling without the ethical boundaries, that they don't need to worship, and they certainly don't require the theology of the church. And if we were to discover what most so-called spiritual but not religious people are into today, it would probably consist of three things that define their spirituality. The first is they tinker about on the fringes of the occult. Now, that doesn't mean that they're Satanists or witches, but their guidance as to what they should do in this year will not be from their daily reading produced by the Scripture Union or the Bible, but rather the horoscope because they believe that, there's, that the stars hold their destiny. And there are various astrologers out there, and some of them have their own astrologers, who will tell them what they want to hear. And as we stand at the beginning of a new year, we may wonder what is ahead for us and for our world. And we may be tempted to find our own personal fortune teller or to take the horoscope seriously. In The Alchemist, in the novel The Alchemist, a character known as the camel driver uh, seeks out an old seer to discover his future and justifies this curiosity in the future by saying, so that he can prepare himself for what is coming to which the seer wisely replies, if good things are coming, then let them be a pleasant surprise. If bad things are coming, and you know in advance, you will greatly suffer even before they occur. In other words, it's probably good for us that we don't know the future, because if this year is going to be like any other year, it will have as good times it's bad times, it's ups and it's downs. And as we got through last year, chances are we're going to get through this year as well. Amen? So you don't need to know what's coming. 
You just need to accept it and the grace given to deal with it at the time. So the first thing that today's spiritual but not religious are into is, is the occult. The second thing uh, that they will usually be into is that the East, the mysterious East, will be considered by them the source of true enlightenment. Not the West with its Christianity, but the East. Thus following the Beatles, who in the 1960s visited the Maharisha Yogi, uh, Christianity has been more or less by them abandoned. Instead, they will seek the wisdom of the East. Yoga, transcendental meditation, Buddhism, reincarnation, all that kind of stuff they're very much into. The interesting thing is this, and here is the irony, that these wise men that, who came to Jesus, they set out on a journey, and they were into all that. But it hadn't met their deepest spiritual needs. They were being drawn for something far deeper and far more profound. They were actually into the occult, because the word magi is the root of the word magic. So they were astrologers as well as astronomers, and they knew their stuff. They were good. They rightly saw in the skies a sign that a, that a significant person was born within Judaism. Not only were they astrologers from the East, that they were, they were from the East. Yet what they needed was not to be found in the East. Westward, they were drawn. But if your thing or your neighbor's thing is neither the occult nor the East, but materialism, if you feel that winning the lottery, for example, would answer every question and satisfy your soul and rest your quest for longing, if that would make you happy and fulfilled, then remember, thirdly, that the wise men were very wealthy. They were rich enough not to need an income and to go on a journey with servants for many, many months and come laden with costly gifts. Yet there was a poverty in their soul, a spiritual hunger, which things could not fulfill. So people who are into these things, the East, philosophy, the occult, the New Age, spirituality, whether to a greater or lesser degree, are all looking for something. So it's often a good point to start a discussion. But we are reminded of the words of St. Augustine of Hippo in the 6th century, who put it thus, Inside everyone is a God-shaped emptiness, and our hearts are restless, O God, until they find their rest in Thee. There came a day when they set out to find the truth. Does the initiative to search come from within us? Or is there something, something, someone out there drawing us on step by step, nearer and nearer? The shepherd in Coella's novel, The Alchemist, is told to look for signs and that, quote, when you want something, all the universe conspires in helping you to achieve it. It was while looking up into the sky one night that they saw their first sign, that which Matthew in his gospel, or in English translates it, a star. But the word need not necessarily be translated as a star as we understand, but simply any astral phenomena I'll not go into the possibilities at this time in the morning as to what it could have been. But uh, interestingly, a few years ago, we were treated to a lovely show in the sky at night as the moon was partially eclipsed. 
something which occurs every so often. In 1603, the scientist Kepler observed that every so often there was a realignment of the planets, and he traced one to around the year 4 BC. There was at that time a conjunction of the planets Jupiter and Saturn with the constellation of Pisces, believed to be connected with the fortunes of Judea. Interestingly enough, just a couple of weeks ago, I was watching on the television a documentary with Chris Packham, you know, Chris Packham, and uh, he and some other scientists and other people were discussing the, um, the Star of Bethlehem. And again, the idea of Kepler's scientific studies came out, and basically the conclusion of this documentary, and remember, they weren't particularly Christian or religious people, was that such a phenomena did appear in the skies very profoundly round about the year 4 BC. Very reassuring to hear that. But the star was not enough. The star was not enough to bring them to their goal. A lot of people don't realize it. They needed a second light, another light, a brighter light to bring them to their goal. And that light was the Bible. Holy Scripture. Numbers 24, 17 had prophesied of a star which would arise out of Jacob. Micah 5, 2 told the exact town where he would be born in Bethlehem. Indeed, the psalmist says, your word is a lamp unto my path. And so the church again needs to regain its confidence in this book of Holy Scripture. For although there is a clear human element in its final form, the divine and supernatural element to the Bible should never be forgotten, for it guides us to truth. But knowing the Bible, knowing the Bible is not enough to bring us to our destination, because the priests in Jerusalem knew their Bibles. They knew that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem, but they didn't go there. Finally, the sign they saw and the book which made known to them led them to Bethlehem. And after many months, they entered into a particular house. And what did they see there? Angels, the trappings of power, the glory of kingship? No, just a toddler on its mother's knee. To some that might seem an anticlimax, but they were rewarded with an insight beyond what the natural eye could see. For they knew exactly who this child was. And at that moment, something almost electric must have passed through their soul, veiled in flesh, the Godhead see. They bowed and paid him homage. These seekers became finders, and the treasures they gave was nothing compared with the treasures they received. In other faiths, yes, there is goodness, wisdom, and insight, but only in Christ, says Colossians 1.19, dwells the fullness of the Godhead in bodily form and all the religious yearnings of humanity find its fulfillment in him. The novel The Alchemist closes with the shepherd boy having not found the treasure in Egypt, returning to Spain, to the ruined church from whence he first set out his journey. And there he dug, and there he discovered the buried treasure. It was nearer to him than he had realized. He could have saved himself a lot of time, effort, and money, although he did learn a lot along the way. You needn't go to the east or to the west. He is nearer than you think. Amen.
the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth, where the rust and moth doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither wrath nor moth doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. Let us present our offerings unto the Lord. All things come of thee, and of thine own do we give thee. Let us pray. Eternal God and loving Father, we give you thanks for this time of the year. Looking back on our journey through the past year, we have seen how your love and goodness have been with us through many failings and dangers, in many joys and adventures. We have received much love from family and friends. We have been encouraged with things we have read and words we have heard. We have grown in our faith and have enjoyed the adventure of being your disciples. Forgive us, Lord, for our slowness of faith, 
the safety in the old, which keeps us from discovering the new. The security of our small circle of friends, which has excluded the potential for new relationships. The opportunities to do good and learn more, which we have neglected. And forgive us for the anxiety, although you understand it, that we bring to the start of this new year. But like the wise men, may we confidently set out believing that you are leading and guiding, that your will is being done and your purposes are being achieved in our lives and in this world. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, by the guiding of a star, the wise men were led to you, so we have been led to worship you. And we pray today for all seekers after truth, for you know the hearts of all. But Father, it must grieve you to see that so much time and money and effort is wasted, chasing illusions, broken cisterns that hold no water, things that do not quench the thirsty soul. We pray that throughout our parish and indeed through the world, that true sincere seekers will be led to find you the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the nations, whose purposes for this world are enfolding before us, we bring before you in prayer those leaders who can be instruments of your will, and we pray that this coming year solutions may be found, aid may be given, justice prevail, and the good news of the Prince of Peace be known, especially in the lands of Ukraine, Gaza, and Israel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before you those who are anxious about this new year, whose jobs are insecure, whose relationships are fragile. Others are ill, and we pray especially today for Ray Norman, who is in hospital, praying that he will recover very soon and know your healing touch. And any other friends whom we know, we commend to God's love and peace at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who began this new year without a loved one, for whom the future will seem so empty. May they know your presence, cheered by memories and encouraged by hope for a glorious reunion in the heavenly places. We give you thanks especially for the life of Rosemary Dunn, a member of this eight o'clock congregation who died recently. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. May her family be enfolded in your healing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we pray for ourselves as a church congregation as we dedicate ourselves to discover your purposes for us collectively. Use the gifts that we have brought. Use our wisdom and our talents and all the gifts you have given us to bring the good news of your gospel to our parish and beyond. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, 
Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be deceived that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who in the substance of our mortal flesh manifested forth his glory, that he might bring us out of darkness unto his own marvelous light. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy did give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and in institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. in the body of Christ coming for you. Be to the body of Christ coming for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. People will come from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south, and they will sit at table in the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Come, all is now ready. the body of Christ coming for you. Watch the body of Christ coming for you. Amen. The body of Christ coming for you. Mary, the body of Christ coming for you. I am the body of Christ coming for you. Silver, the body of Christ coming for you. The body of Christ coming for you. The body of Christ coming for you. Denise, the body of Christ coming for you.
As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, the bright splendor whom the nations seek, may we who with the wise men have been drawn by your light discern the glory of your presence in your Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Would you please stand for the glory of Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, good will towards men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.